Greetings again, beautiful white positive brothers and sisters, beautiful white western people out there. Hope you're all doing very good as usual. Coming back to you again for the second time on Friday, December 18th. And uh, I'm still in LA just crawling through traffic. It's getting into evening time, you can see it's dark. Uh, only just after 5 p.m. but it's already getting dark these days um, and uh, I thought I was gonna be heading back out on the good old highway but they're having me pick up another local load so just running around LA today and uh, that can be a full day very easily just going around LA obviously because of the traffic everything takes three, four, five times longer than you think. <laughs> um, so I'm just trudging through traffic, LA traffic for today. Um, and then it looks like tonight I might get some time off, uh, Saturday off, before I head back to Vegas, it looks like on Sunday. So um, as you all know, Blue Ninja here, one of many apostles for white well-being one purpose to save our kind. We have a daunting task in front of us and I'm just thinking about some things that have occurred to me today. Not new things <laughs> uh, really but just things that really hit deep. If, I'll just make one quick point before this is going to be a quick one before I go in to pick up this loading and I haven't had a chance to make my real video that I wanted to make today so um, gonna have to be another shorty and then I'm gonna make another one probably tonight uh, which is the meat of the matter I got some important things to discuss here um, first of all greetings to everybody big time love and respect and support and gratitude and appreciation to everyone out there big salute uh, to uh, to everyone out there. I want to absolutely acknowledge everybody doing everything for that they are for white well-being. Everybody out there that's listening to this is participating in the recapturing of our destiny, is participating in whites being led to safety again. And um, so we we're all doing it. I appreciate everyone that's helping me out, encouraging me, supporting me, taking the time to support my humble work. Um, it's very motivating and fueling to me. And that's what we do for each other, as we know. So thank you all so much, humbly, uh, from the depths of my heart, from the roots and the source of my Western heart, truly. Um, Thank each and every one. Uh, but uh, I do, I'll make one thing I've been thinking about here uh, just on this little short drive I'm on now, which is taking a while because of all the traffic. <laughs> but uh, donning armor, I'm in your neck of the woods. I'm heading into uh, from Pomona to Ontario. Not terribly far, but as you know, the LA people aren't acrobats. Uh, Mrs. Jess Horst, anyone in the LA area knows that going 10 miles can take you an hour <laughs> in traffic. I got like a 15 mile trip, but it's probably gonna take me about an hour, maybe even more. Anyway, um, I'll make uh, one thing I'm thinking about here is two things. I wanted to just play a quick little song uh, for the time being and then make one point I'm thinking about. And the reason our task is a little bit daunting to save our people and why it's probably one of the biggest achievements that's ever been done in history, literally. It's no less than one of the biggest things ever in history, I think, because we, we, we have been so steeped and immersed in anti-whiteism for so long, like I've been saying, it's really been completely internalized in people. Uh, Non-whites and whites alike 
Um, even people who would not say that they hate white people, even people who would say that they have no ill feelings towards white people, they would even say they like white people. Even these kind of people still have these anti, this anti-whiteism inside them because that's what's surrounding us. That's the environment we're in, uh, that we're all immersed in. So for a lot of us, it's just being pathogens. It's not conscious hatred, being against whites. For, I would say, most people out there, it's just internally, it's subconscious, it's being pathogens. They don't even realize they're in there themselves. And my sister has really made me realize this in a, in a, in a certain way recently. That's the heart of what I want to get to. Talk about a conversation that's ongoing with my sister. I mentioned it to Jason on the last Going Free on Sunday, made some comments. He addressed my comments, some of them about my conversation with my sister, um, Nicole. And uh, the conversation has progressed even more, but not to, <laughs> not going the way that uh, we want it to go. But it's very instructive though, nonetheless. So anyhow, thinking about that reminds me of, she has a lot of mean pathogens in her, a lot. Very deep seated, just like a lot of people do. She's a good example of how a lot of people are. Um, I would definitely not call her anti-white, but well, <laughs> maybe I will have to, but we'll see how that, we'll see, we'll see that in the next video. But she, is a good person. She doesn't hate anyone, but she has been so infected with the pathogens that she doesn't even know it. That's how most people are. Most people are literally programmed by the media. Now, there's just a couple of points here I'll make. Number one, it shows how effective the programming is. Programming from the media, from TV, if you think that people do not listen to TV, people are not affected by what they see on TV, on the news, on, you know, in music, TV shows, movies, any kind of radio, any kind of media whatsoever mainstream. If you think people are not affected by that, definitely wrong. People are severely affected by that. In fact, people, as I've talked about before, and a lot of us going free know, people will listen to the media and form their worldview based on the media more so than what they see in reality. If they see something contradictory to the media in reality, they will believe the media. Case in point, anti-whiteism. The anti-white media narrative tells everybody that non-whites are oppressed. Non-whites have a disadvantage. And then what happens? You go out into the real world and you see who are the homeless people now walking the streets? White people. Who are the people getting all the opportunities? Non-white people. Who are the ones with the true advantages being handed to them? non-white people of various kinds. Who are the ones with no advantages that are truly disadvantaged on purpose, being kept down? White people. People see this in reality, but what does the media tell them? What does the anti-white tell them? The anti-white narrative. The anti-white narrative tells them, even though it is completely false, it is completely contradictory to reality. It is like saying, pigs fly. There are pigs flying out there. It's like saying, yes, we have, we have a rain shower of frogs today. It is raining frogs today. People go outside and they don't see the frogs coming down raining from the clouds. But they will still talk about it as if it's true 
Why? Because that's what's on the media. The media says it's raining frogs and pigs are flying. Uh, you can throw an apple, a ball into the air and it will float away. Gravity does not apply. They can make up lies even as grievous and as obviously wrong as those. People will go out, they will see the contradiction, they will see, okay, it's not really true, but they will believe the media, the TV screen, anyway. Why does that happen? For example, the anti-white narrative tells people that whites are advantaged, advantaged. Whites have privilege. So why do people believe that even when they see the contrary? Well, there's a lot of reasons I think for that, but number one, a lot of it is they don't think about it themselves a lot. Number two, they just think that, okay, the media has to have some truth to it. Number three, a lot of people, they just don't want to go against the grain. If the media, as powerful, as influential as it is, is saying something, people just don't want to go against the grain. People assume other people believe it, therefore they go with it. It's kind of a self-fulfilling prophecy. They think, you know, someone thinks the next guy over is believing it, and that guy thinks you believe it, so you both are believing it because you think each other believe it. But neither of you really believes it. <laughs> We're breaking the ice on that, but that's how it works. Um, so number one, when people that are, in, are infected with anti-white meat pathogens, it is showing people that we would call babes, that are not really truly anti-white, they're just infected. When that happens, that shows how effective the mind control of the media really is. That it does shape people's opinions and views of the world. Even contrary and opposing reality. Contradictory to reality. So, shows, really shows how that that programming of the media really works um, when against, <laughs> totally against reality. Uh, number two, it shows that we have a big, big task on our hands. Because that, that thinking, that anti-white ism, and those main passages are so deep in people that it is nothing short of totally overhauling their entire world view. Everything they thought they knew has to be overall essential. Almost just missed my exit there. <laughs> Getting so into this talk. It is nothing short of overhauling their entire worldview in many cases. So, um, big task on our hands. That's why we have to be patient. It takes time. <laughs> it's just chipping away little by little, brick by brick, on this massive skyscrapers, entire civilization we're trying to rebuild. So it's very deep. It's going all the way to the roots of people's thinking, people's worldviews, people's mentality. It is uprooting everything they think they know to be true. So it's not easy to uproot that in people. It's a conviction they've had. It's something they've taken for granted. It's like someone who's dedicated to their religion. And you want to, and you know, you're going to try to uproot that and say, oh, no, it's not true. You should 